Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the webinar. I'm kind of nervous, but <laughs> I'm going to think that you all are my students. Uh, my name is Jessica Montiveros, and I am an eighth grade math teacher. Um, I am in charge of uh, sixth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, and algebra one at my middle school. I work for a United ISD. Um, I've been teaching for ever already. It feels like forever, honestly, uh, more than a decade. And uh, honestly, I had told myself, I'm only gonna do it for a decade. And now I'm over a decade and it's like, okay, I'm gonna do it forever. <laughs> uh, here's a, a family picture. Um, and of course, I could have chosen a better picture with, where both of my babies were actually looking at the camera, but that is reality, you know? Um, everything is so unexpected when it comes to technology. Uh, not only to our families, but to our students as well. So I chose it on purpose. Um, next, please. How do I use Edge Elastic? Uh, I use it for so many reasons. Um, they have pre-made assessments, uh, star release tests. It's a new feature that just recently was added. Uh, it prepares students for online assessments. I know that um, the start test in 2022 will be 100% online. So this is a tremendous, awesome tool that, you know, as a teacher, you can utilize to prepare the students um, for the future. Uh, I create and assign class assessments or practice assessments as well. I love it because it allows you to differentiate instruction. Um, you can allow them to take more than one time, uh, choose different levels. Uh, it's, it's amazing how many features is, it has. It also allows you to see the grading part real time. So if a student is getting a correct answer or a wrong answer, you can see it uh, live. Also, it allows you to give immediate feedback and constructive feedback. So I'm gonna show you uh, how I go over those main points with my students. Um, if you can go to the next one, please. So like I said, there's so many uh, release start tests for math for six, seven, eight, and algebra one. What I did is I actually went through every single start test and I broke it down by categories. I know at our campus and at our district, sometimes we like to get uh, the start questions and categorize them by category. So uh, what I did is I got 2016 star release and I got category one, category two, category three, category four, and it's already broken down into um, an assessment on its own. So instead of having 42 items or 38 items on the test, now you're gonna have only the ones that pertain to the category. So if you want to have access to this, you will. I made them all public, you can search either by title or um, I'm not sure if you can search by person, uh, Eliana, I, I think she can tell us right now. Yeah, if that's you can, possible. You can, yep, you can enter uh, your name as the author and these will come up. Oh, okay, neat. So you can just type in my name, Jessica Ontiveros, or you can also go ahead and email me at jontiveros at uisd.net and I can um, forward you those links. But like I said, they're all, public now from sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And they're all by they're all of them by category. Um, these are sixth grade. If you can go to the next one, please. This is seventh grade and the next one, please. And this is eighth grade. So can I share my screen, please? Yes, please do. Yes. So, okay. All right, so as you can see, the way I created each assessment was as follows. You go into the dashboard, you are going to see all of your classes set up by now, if you are currently using it. If you're not using it, it doesn't matter. You're gonna have the content bundles down here. You're gonna select the start test. 
And it's very important to always clear everything if you're gonna search by topic. If you click directly here, it's gonna take you to the start test. Um, you can use the filter for grades. So for example, if you go into sixth grade, it's gonna give you all the star release for all of the star exams. So you're gonna have math, you're gonna have science reading, all of them. If you go into mathematics, you're gonna see the four years that were released. From here, um, you can choose whichever year you want. You go into more and you will have options. You can either see the details you can clone it, you can preview, or you can assign it. So what I did, I went ahead and cloned the test, and then it will allow you to keep the reference to the original items, and then you can clone each them individually later. So you will continue, you can title the test. So I'm just going to go ahead and title it 20, 2017 grade six math category one. Uh, you go into the next tab, which is to add items. Okay, here you can either add any items that you can search on the search bar here, or you can actually go straight into the test because remember we're dealing with a test. So I'm not going to add any more items to the current test I, that I currently have. So once I'm, I'm in the test, I can actually delete any of the items that do not pertain to the category. And I just go basically to, okay, let's say in category one, there's 12 items, then I'm just going to select the 12 items that pertain to that. And that's basically what I do. Uh, it's very important that you go ahead and change the points because if you do not, it will remain at one. So if you want them to equal to 100, then you're just gonna have to divide, and divide them equally. Uh, after you choose the items that you want in your assessment, you can go into settings and this is where the magic comes true. Uh, I just found out something through my students and it was, I don't know if, whether it was good or bad, but if you go into practice, it has two options on the te test type. If you go into practice, it actually, if you, are not careful, it actually gives them three tries per question. That means that it will allow the student to check their answer three times before they actually submit. So imagine, I mean, I was wondering why they were getting so many hundreds. I was like, oh my God, I feel so good about myself. And before I knew it, I was like, oh my God, I forgot that it was a practice and it, al it allows them to check the answer three times before they submit. So yeah, make sure that you are very careful. Uh, when you go into class assessment, uh, I always choose release the scores only and all or nothing. You either get it right or wrong. And in the section, the tries per question, it goes automatically to zero. I just noticed that they have the anti-cheating uh, features and the complete test in one sitting. And there was one restrict question navigation. This is the one that I'm probably gonna be using um maybe soon when the power is back it gives you a notification if the student actually left your assessment and they navigated into the web or they went away from the edge elastic page so this is a super neat feature and also it allows you to write uh the scratch pad so you can enable it or disable so this is pretty awesome for math because we always want them to show work. So the scratch pad is definitely a must. And that's basically what I do here. Um, and you have the link to share, to print or to save. You go into saving and then you can go ahead and publish. You can make it private, share it with your school or district or to everyone. Like I said, all of my assessments have been shared publicly. So you can, if you're interested in, in um, using some of my assessments that are already made, don't forget that you just need to search for Jessica Ontiveros and you'll be able to see all of um, the ones that I've currently have. Uh, if you can take me back to the presentation, please. Oh. There you go. 
on the next slide, please. Okay, so why is Agilastic so amazing, especially for Texas? Um, I don't know if you knew this, but in 2022, 2023, new item types are gonna be coming up in our STAR exams because it's gonna be online. They're gonna make it more um, interesting, if you wanna say it like that. It will have, uh, for math, it will have the multi-select, uh, the constructed response, the drag and drop, the hotspot, the, in the text entry, the sliders, and the graphing. So this is very important to consider because Edulastic offers not only this options, but many more that can totally train your students on how to be exposed to those. Remember that most of the times we're well, I am traditional um, most of the times and I only give them the text entry or the multiple choice. So the students are kind of already used to those two types. So Edulastic allows you to introduce so many more types for them to get prepared and for them to train. Uh, next, please. So as you can see uh, here, there's a two part question. Um, that you can find on Edge Elastic or you can actually create. Next, please. There is a text entry in this option. Next. And then there's another text entry. Notice that it has five boxes here. So who knows, maybe they'll have one box for us, for the students to input or two, uh, who knows, but at least we are gonna get them trained to multiple versions. Next, please. This one, they actually allows you for the, it's a uh, drop down menu. So I actually like this one. It was very neat when one of my, when it was assigned to one of my students, they were able to see, uh, they actually, some of them asked like, how do you answer? And I said, oh, you're gonna have to click on the arrow. So this is a very good option for you to start training them on that, okay? Next, please. You have the drag and drop, next. And then there's also a drag and drop but with um, graphs, next. And this one is pretty important because um, for algebra one, they're gonna have to actually graph the linear equation. Next, please. Or graph inequalities. I'll get, I guess go back a little bit, there you go. So as you can see, uh, all of these options are already embedded with Edge Elastic. You're gonna be able to see all of these kinds of questions are already made. These questions I did not create, I actually found them. Um, so you can just type in your topic that you want and then each question actually has a description on the type of question that it shows. Uh, if you can, See my screen right here. So for example, if I start looking for test items um, right here, you can see that this one is multiple choice, multiple choice, uh, expression multi-part. So each item actually tells you what kind of question it is. If it's a multi-part, if it's a matching table, so that's what's pretty neat about Edge Elastic. Um, and let me go back to the presentation. Next, please. And this is what it comes down to. Uh, why this is the main reason why I use Edge Elastic, because in this section, when you assign it, you are actually seeing real time live how they are doing here. Notice that in this section, you can see that some students have submitted, it will say graded. Some students are in progress, they're still working on it. Uh, but I, what I really wanna cover is the following. Um, you can actually see which ones are wrong. If you can go to the next one, please. You see every single item um, the data for every single item. And you can see here that, let's say on this assessment, question number five, they're missing out a lot. This is my approach when it comes to 
So giving constructive feedback and using uh, Edge Elastic for teachable moments. Let me go ahead and show you how I do it. So let's say that all of you got number five wrong. I'm gonna tell you, okay, can everybody look at my screen? I'm gonna be covering number five at this time. So I go into my test. So let's pretend that I assigned this sixth grade math category two, 2017. And I tell them, everybody's looking at my screen. I go to my preview and go to number five. And in this question, I can actually click on the scratch pad and tell them, okay, everybody look at my screen. And at this time, I'm gonna be explaining number five. And then I go over the points, reading the question with them, setting it up. And then I don't give them the answer. I just use it as a teachable moment. And um, it's not going to get written on it because once you exit, you come back to it, it gets reset it again. All right, so this is how I use it for those times that everybody's getting a specific number wrong. And it is your test, you call the shots in your class, you know, and um, that's basically what is working a lot for me because sometimes the students, they just need a little refresher. Sometimes they are messing up on the formula or they didn't read the vocabulary words. Um, they forgot to simplify, they forgot to substitute, they forgot to do something. And that's how I use it uh, for my students. All right. And next, I think that should do it, right? Let me see. Yes. Okay, so that's basically it, uh, how I use Edge Elastic. And uh, I just wanna encourage you to ask as many questions as you can. Uh, I'm a kind of person that's a little bit shy. So I try to learn it on my own until I attend the webinar and I find out so many other things like, oh my God, I should have asked before I put it into practice instead of class assessment. So uh, I just wanna say that it is a very amazing resource that it's free for teachers. Uh, so make sure that you use it and you ask questions. And if there's anything, please put it in the chat. Uh, don't forget my email, jayontiveros at uisd.net if you want to have access to all the pre-made um, assessments by category. Thank you for your time.